Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to Adobe Live. Today, we are starting the week off with some great creativity with Yulia Nimke. So please introduce yourself and uh, what you're all about and what you've uh, got to share with us. Yeah. Hi. Uh, first of all, thanks for having me. Um, I'm Julia Nimke. Uh, I'm a photographer based in Berlin, Germany, and um, I shoot everything around the theme of being outside and enjoying nature. Uh, I photograph mostly with natural light, but I don't want to be like in that one niche of just shooting portraits or travel. It's, uh, I would say, a wide variety of photography it's niches, you could say. Nice. So uh, if you're just joining us over on uh, YouTube, then um feel free to stick around there. But if you want to join in with the chat, uh, make sure you come and join us on Behance and uh, we'll be going through and uh, keeping up with things. I can see there's already uh, quite a few people in there. Um, a lot of people starting off the week with some great creativity. Um, uh, lots of hello hellos. Uh, Sandrine, Anika, Stuart, um, Oliver, all sorts of people in there. Um, so uh, let's have a look through um, some of your work and your images because i am a big fan of your photography um i spent a lot of time browsing through your instagram and uh looking at all of the imagery and the color and there's something very interesting about the way that you work with color because to me the the images stand out as like a, a composition of things that are somewhat simple um and i mean that in the best possible way but the depth and the color and the the sort of character that comes out of the image just has me staring at the images for a long time um so i'm a big fan wow. of your work and i'm looking forward to seeing how uh you sort of work with your color and how you go through your edits and um and things like that um so yeah if you've got any uh any things that you want to show on your instagram or your website just as like a a good sort of um starting point of looking at things because i think your work just it really carries itself so well. And I, I want people to see this. <laughs> well, first of all, thanks uh, so much for, yeah, for the compliment. Um, yeah, uh, maybe let's just start with uh, with my website. Um, I think here you can just get a, a good overview of the kind of work that I do and the colors that I uh, tend to work with. Um, so I think one thing that's uh, kind of defining my style is uh, going for warmer tones um, and at the same time trying to uh, create timeless images. Um, and I feel like in the past I used to uh, use presets all the time and crazy filters back then with like hipstamatic and Instagram filters and everything. Um, and yeah, I just, uh, what I like to do is uh, revisit my work and look at the work that I created uh, years ago. And one thing I uh, realized was that usually after a few years, I wasn't really happy with uh, the editing that I did. I felt like it was too, um, yeah, too much uh like tied around uh the the look that was modern at the time yeah and i think uh what i was trying to do is like go for uh a little more timeless look uh and classic look and at the same time still find my own way of handling colors and mm -hmm. yeah and i think that's uh what i've been trying to do 
in, in the past few years with my work. Yeah, that's one thing that I always um, I always think back to when, uh, especially when you're learning photography and starting out and for those who are maybe progressing fast, if you're not looking back and thinking, oh, what was I doing back then? Then you're probably not <laughs> progressing. Um, so that's definitely like a, a good way of, of looking at your work. But I mean, your images are beautiful and there's some amazing locations in there as well. Um, but yeah, yeah. The, the warmer tones is definitely something that is very noticeable. Is that something that you work with uh, in terms of the sort of weather? Are you drawn to sort of warmer environments or do you just try and take a scene into a warmer sort of style? Um, I think the second. So because I feel like I, I usually tend to go to uh, like colder places. Like I yeah. loved being on the Lofoten Islands and in Iceland. Um, and like all of Great Britain, like Scotland, um, and especially whenever I'm hiking, I usually go to to colder places to hike. Um, but I think then the the uh, I think rather than the en environment I'm in, it's uh, the light that I uh, tend to photograph in. So, um, like as you can see here, for example, I absolutely love having the like the golden evening light um, or as you can see here um, and I think that maybe is one of the reasons why the tones are warmer instead of the the location itself um, mm. yeah and nice. I think that's also th something that defines your style you know the kind of light you usually shoot in or you love shooting in um, is also I mean, it's in photography, it's all about light. So uh, yeah, the time of the day you choose for for uh, photographing is, I personally think, a key for the style you go for. Yeah, definitely. And, and like you say, it's, it's not necessarily about a particular time is the right time to shoot. It's just knowing what is your particular time that you mm -hmm. want to go and shoot in. Um, yeah. And if that happens to be golden hour, then golden hour is, is what you enjoy, is what you feel inspired by. and. Yeah. I know I'm definitely in that in that group as well. Yeah, exactly. But then I think at the same time, it's also important not to just stick to that certain time of the day uh, and instead also, you know, uh, photograph at other times of the day um, because I feel otherwise you're losing a lot of opportunity for, yeah, for other images as well. Um, mm. So, yeah, I mean, when I was starting out with photography, I was photographing basically everything um, at every time of the day. Um, yeah. And then by, yeah, as the years went by, I just realized, okay, uh, I feel more drawn to, like you said, the golden hour and warmer tones and having harsh shadows um, and maybe photographing more in backlight, stuff mm. like that. Yeah. Are you more of a, a morning person or an evening person? uh depends on the season <laughs> okay so i mean in in winter i'm i'm more of an evening person and in summer uh yeah i just can't wait to get up early and uh and see how the day uh awakes and how there's just new ways for photographing and being out there yeah love it uh, I noticed there was an image in there as well. The um, there was an Adobe splash screen that was uh, oh, yeah, yeah, Lightroom. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, That's a big deal. Yeah, that was uh, crazy for sure. <laughs> um, you know, every time I opened up Lightroom, I would see that photo, and actually, it was a self-portrait that I did uh, a few years ago for uh, for just a project that I did where I was kind of stuck with photography and I uh, and I didn't really know like what to photograph and I felt like I should just have the challenge to create an image every day and then it somehow turned out to be a self-portrait uh, project and yeah and that was back in 2014 mm -hmm. uh, and yeah then some years ago Adobe uh, reached out to me and said you know what we want to have that as the splash screen so yeah that was crazy nice. for sure uh yeah. speaking of which should we jump over into lightroom and 
uh, see some editing styles. Uh, we've already got a question in here of asking what camera you're shooting with. Um, so I shoot with the uh, Canon EOS R, uh, no, Canon EOS R5. Um, nice. And uh, I just uh, bought the uh, the Leica Q2 as well, uh, oh, which is. I'm dreaming about this camera. Yeah, it's uh, it's yeah. I feel like in the past few months, uh, as there was not really a way to like uh, travel far away uh, and explore new places, I felt like I wanna uh, be able to to photograph more in daily life and uh, and have a camera that I can just take with me all the time. Um, and I was, yeah, I just, uh, it's it's been a dream uh, and I'm so glad I bought it in the end. Um, and I've used it for, I would say a month now. Um, mm -hmm. And it's just, it's a perfect size. Uh, you can like literally take it anywhere with you. Um, and it has a fixed lens and it's just, yeah, I just love having that one lens and just focusing on shooting with that. And it's uh, it's been wonderful. So whenever I go on a like walk during the day or uh, meet up with a friend in the park or so, I just take the camera with me and, and just photograph, you know, more of like daily life situations. Yeah. And I feel like that uh, brought back the like the playful aspect of photographing. Mm -hmm. um, because I feel especially when you're working as a photographer and you're making money out of your craft, uh, I feel like personally what happened to me is I, I didn't really photograph anything else anymore. Like it was all just on commission. Um, but yeah, I'm so glad I have a camera that takes me into that mood again. Yeah, definitely. It's funny that as photographers, you need um, that playful side to come back because it, it does help both the commercial side and the personal side. Um, yeah. I just think of in the same way of someone who might be, say, a professional driver, but they have their weekend car, the, <laughs> the fun one that they'll yeah. run around with. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the Q2, oh, such a great looking camera. It's I know the, the way a camera looks doesn't really affect the image quality, but just having something that feels nice in your hand, mm -hmm. I'm sure just transcends... Uh, through your images and especially when it's personal and, and taking pictures of your friends and out and about I'm sure that will really come through just in the connection you have to it oh yeah of course and also it's you know uh, having such a small camera camera it's it's not very intimidating so whenever mm. I photograph someone they're not like afraid of uh yeah of me taking photographs of them yeah so. definitely that's also yeah and at the same time and then we can stop with the talking about the camera but it's yeah it's it's also uh so uh i mean if you've seen my work before um i like go on hikes and i also like bikepacking and stuff like that so um it's it's also a good camera for those kind of trips for more like the active trips and at the same time the uh the resolution is so big that in case that turns out to be a commercial uh, like story in the end, uh, you can still use those kind of files because they're mm. huge. Yeah. Nice. All right. But uh, yeah, let's let's jump uh, to Lightroom. And uh, what we have here are uh, five images that I uh, chose to uh, show you guys today and show you how I edit them and also talk about my approach in uh, editing in general. All right, so uh, let's start with the first one. So here we have an image that I took uh, on a trip in California. And that's uh, Mono Lake at sunset or a little bit after sunset actually. Um, it's quite a, um, a creepy looking structure. It's like it's kind of a, a formation that's coming out from the water. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, I never looked at it that way, but it's right. And in fact, it's that's exactly what happens here. Uh, so the, uh, the water level um, got lower like during the years. And this rock formation here uh, was within the lake like some hundred right. years ago. Um, 
but yeah, as there is less and less water, uh, you now have those crazy looking uh, rock formations uh, close to the shore of the lake. So yeah, and I think what I loved about this image here is uh, like how minimalistic it is in a way. And I guess I'm also always drawn to uh, reflections. Mm. Um, and also I just loved how soft the light was at that time. So yeah, it's almost like a, a painting straight out of camera. It's, mm -hmm. just, it's already got that aesthetic to it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And yeah, I think that's up front uh, something uh, I want to address here is that um, I do spend time on editing images, but it's usually like one to two minutes. So for me personally, most of the work happens uh, in camera and just making sure that I perfect my craft and the exposure and everything uh, like already in camera. Um, a, a good approach to have. Yeah. Definitely. But yeah, I mean, uh, some people, they just love uh, spending hours uh, and hours on like the editing part and going crazy with like adding el elements and stuff. Um, and I mean, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, uh, yeah, two different approaches, I think. Yeah. Um, maybe I'm just going to already show you the, like the before where we're going to with the editing. Um, so here you can see, uh, the before and after, and that's what we will, uh, what we will go through now. And I'm just going to show you, uh, how I'm going to edit this one. So, uh, let's go back here. Um, so. The first thing that I us usually do is, uh, um, as you may have recognized, uh, the aspect ratio that I choose is uh, four by three, um, just because I uh, think for, for me personally, it's, it's a more harmonious uh, mm -hmm. aspect ratio. Um, so that's what I usually go for. Um, and that's the first thing first thing that I do is uh, cropping the image and choosing uh, what to integrate and whatnot. Um, and then next up, um, I think most of the time what I do is I actually go in order uh, off like the right panel here. Um, and like I said before, I love warmer tones. So what I do here is with the temperature, temperature is go a lot more to the warm side of the temperature and one like Kelvin number uh, that I often use is uh, 6,500 6, so uh, I'm just gonna go for that here um, and then with the tint um, I want to push a little bit more to magenta uh, to underline the colors of the sunset we have here. And, and my approach with editing is, uh, I don't wanna go too crazy with the edit um, and just kind of like complement the truth uh, or the setting. I like and, that term, complement the truth. That's <laughs> uh, very poetic, I like that. <laughs> Yeah, and and at the, and at the same time, uh, photographing and, and just editing is such a personal uh, thing to do. And for me, in a way, I think the editing it's it always comes down to how I remember uh, the the scenery, and then uh, yeah, doing the edit the way I remember it. And so what I do here. Uh, I'm not going to touch the exposure, exposure or the contrast, uh, but I'm going to lower the highlights. And as I do that, you can already see that you get a lot more warmth uh, and a lot more even look to the image. And um, sometimes I know exactly where I want to go with the edit. Uh, sometimes I don't. But for this one, I already know that I actually like having uh, the like the rock formations even more as a silhouette. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to lower the shadows as well, which also adds a little bit more contrast here. Then with the whites, I'm not really going to touch these. Uh, they're going to affect the image image 
quite a lot. So I'm just going to leave it like that. And then what, what I like to do here, uh, not always, but sometimes is reduce the clarity. Um, cause I feel like it depends on the setting, uh, you're photographing, but it can just add a little bit more atmosphere to the image and, and reduce mm -hmm. the, the, like the digital look of the images. Yeah. Um, a little bit like having a, um, like a mist filter or like a, um, yeah, like a fog or haze. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, and then here, what I like to do is, uh, bring up the vibrance a little bit. Uh, I don't want to have the image too saturated, uh, but for this one, I, I just love having the rich colors. Then here with the tone curve, I'm not going to touch this part here right now, but then one part where I spent, I would say most of the time probably, uh, is this area right here. Uh, where I can just manipulate uh, the colors and uh, just get my personal look in a way. Uh, so here, when we go to hue, usually what I like to do with the blue is pull that one a little bit more to cyan. So I'm going to click on that one here and just see uh, that I can get a little bit more to cyan. And then with... Uh, like with the yellow part, I'm gonna check as well, like how we can change the look. So I could either go crazy, crazy and have a little bit more to magenta or orange or the other way around, have it more yellow. But I think I'm just gonna go a little bit more to orange here. Surprisingly, that's not um, usually when you do such a extreme sort of difference on the scale that really ruins an image, but that surprisingly is still held up pretty well. Yeah, 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 that's right. It um it lends itself quite well to a, a wildly different color shift. Uh huh. Yeah. You, yeah. I mean, yeah. You always have to make sure uh, you're not destroying the image when doing that mm. kind of edit. And then also, what I usually do while I'm editing an image is uh, push the Y button and check the before and after and make sure I'm not going totally crazy with the edit. <laughs> um, and yeah, and as I can see now, I'm already quite happy with the edit. Like I have more warmer tones. Um, I have the like the rock formation a little bit more as a silhouette. And I've been reducing the highlights and just adding overall more warmth to the image. Um, but then for that one here, when I click into the image a little bit closer, you can see the chromatic aberration here. And that's one thing I'm going to... Uh, reduce uh so usually and i just forgot to do that one uh usually i enable profile corrections right at the beginning um and what that does is uh, lightroom automatically recognize the kind of camera and lens you've been using for that one um and it just corrects automatically and then here with uh, removing chromatic aberration so we can see the magenta and cyan or more like green here. I'm going to remove that. And you can see how perfectly that's been removed. So before and after. And yeah, that's pretty much what I would do for this image right here. I'm just going to show you the before and after again. Um, also, what I love to do is push the L key uh, and have no element that I see except for mm. the two images. Yeah, that's a, a great um, great viewing mode, actually. I mm -hmm. very rarely use that uh, personally, but that's a, uh, a shortcut I need to kind of get into my muscle memory, definitely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Quite often, I'm, I'm more of a before and after with the um, the slash key, just to, to see like over the same composition, but ah, side by side. Yeah, uh, yeah. A different way of seeing it, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a, a very simple um, but very tasteful edit. Uh, I see what you mean about you don't go too far on things. And mm -hmm. I imagine if you weren't running through your thought process on it, you'd probably whip through that really quick. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, um, I mean, 
I think that one for me personally is, a, is, is an easy image to edit because I already have the kind of light situation and the kind of tones that I mm. usually go for and that I love um, to capture. Um, and I think that's why this, this image was in a way very easy for me to edit. Um, and yeah, I just, uh, one thing that I almost always do is like reduce the highlights and just get a more even look in the image um, instead of having like the, the super harsh contrast and, and the, like the very digital look. Um, and yeah, I think, uh, I don't know if like that still influence, influences me, but back then I started uh, photographing uh, when, when there was still analog photography. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so I'm a freelance photographer for three years now, but I've been photographing uh, for over 15 years. And yes. yeah, I think I just still love the more of like the analog aesthetics um, yeah. and, and I mean, try to go for that. There's definitely a timeless factor to that, definitely. Yeah, exactly. Even with exactly. the um, just the crop of choosing a four by three, um, mm -hmm. that's obviously very synonymous with medium format and um, just older, larger film cameras. Is that something that has kind of come to your attention through older cameras or is it just a, a happy accident that happened one day? Um, that's a good question. I think it's, it just happened one day. Um, I think I did shoot with like medium format cameras um, and I still have uh, some old cameras that I like to use from time to time. Um, but yeah, I think it just started somehow that I uh, cropped an Im image with like four by three. And then the more I used the four by three, um, the more my eyes got used to it. Um, mm -hmm. So now that's the thing that I just always do and that I feel is, is like more harmonious uh, yeah. when, when looking at the image itself. Mm. Yeah. Nice. Uh, let's head to the second one here. Uh, Where's this? That's uh, the Lofoten Islands in Norway. Oh, I'd um, love to go to Norway so much. It's, yeah, it's, it's a stunning country and the landscape is, yeah, it's just mind-blowing. I can't blowing. decide if I'd rather be there in winter or in summer either with all of the snow and uh, the sort of cold crisp area or uh, yeah. crisp air or with the extended daylight hours and that sort of warm glowing hues everywhere uh, mm -hmm. i probably have to go twice to be honest yeah that's what i was gonna say i think you should go twice so yeah. uh for the lofoten island i went there uh in winter obviously uh which was wonderful because uh um yeah i could see uh the What's it called? Polar, polar light. Oh, the northern lights. Yeah, the northern lights. So I saw the northern lights when I was there, um, which uh, is just a wonderful uh, and, and spectacular thing to see. Um, mm. But then also I went to Norway a few, few years before this trip and uh, went hiking in, in more like the middle part of Norway. Um, and that was wonderful as well. So it's, yeah, it's just hard to decide. And I mean, mm -hmm. for the Lofoten Island itself, I felt being there in winter time was probably good because I think, well, obviously not now, but it is definitely getting more crowded um, mm -hmm. and, and a popular destination. But uh, if you want to go somewhere else that's not so crowded, but just as spectacular as the Lofoten Islands, I uh, I would recommend uh, checking out Zenja, S-E-N-J-A, which is a beautiful island close uh, to the Lofoten Islands. And it's, yeah, it's just as wonderful as the Lofoten Islands. I'm going to make a note of that right now <laughs> before I forget. Um, yeah, of course. So um, here we have an image uh, shot during blue hour. And uh, what I like about this image here 
is how pretty much like with the first image you have the reflection here of, of the like beautiful shaped mountain um, and then also having the scale of the place with uh, the buildings close to the mountains. I think that's something I'm always drawn to, to, uh, to kind of capture the, uh, the dimensions mm. um, and just I having... Imagine the... an image like this printed in massive. You could spend so much time just looking in and inspecting all the smaller details. And mm -hmm. um, I mean, seeing it uh, as it is on my screen right now, it, it's pretty small. And I wouldn't have known that there was like a, a village down there. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's an amazing amount that. of detail. Yeah. And it's, uh, and for example, here you can see the bridge you're crossing when you, yeah, when you go by a car and it's, wow. And having the lights already on here. Um, yeah, I think that just adds to the image itself. Do you shoot mostly handheld or do you use tripods at all? Uh, mostly handheld, yeah, because I just, mm, I think the way I work is I I don't go to a place and wait for uh, the, the kind of light or um, the, the composition. Instead, I'm, I just love to be flexible uh, when yeah. I'm, yeah, when I'm traveling or when I'm photographing and just seeing this and, for example, this scenery. So I was driving my car the rental car um, and I would see a bridge um, and I could already imagine that probably there's like a good uh, viewpoint to like see this kind of mountain so I would just uh, stop there and just hop, hop out of the car and uh, just photograph that I mean let's have a look so I was shooting that one uh, yeah with a pretty open aperture and ISO mm. 200 and the, yeah, that was definitely handheld and easy to, to hold. And that's a Sigma lens, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a nice and sharp as well. It is, yeah. I actually don't have it anymore. Oh, uh, really? So I now have like the 16 to 35 millimeter. Um, Cause I, sometimes I felt like I need a wider lens and then also have like the 35 millimeter as a, uh, just as a good lens itself. Mm -hmm. But yeah, interesting to see. I shot it with that one. <laughs> um, yeah, for, so for that one, um, I next to shooting uh, during golden light, I absolutely love shooting during blue hour and just having uh, like an overall blue touch to the scenery. Um, and I think that's something just gonna switch but here you can see for example here as well um, or on my website uh, the images at the bottom uh, we have a few blue hour shots here as well um, and I think it's just a, a very interesting time of the day um, because you still have like all the texture and all the information um, but you can definitely see it's it uh it changes to to rather nighttime yeah it's like nighttime with the lights on is yeah it's kind of naturally bright for you but it is seemingly dark yeah i see what mm -hmm. you mean yeah exactly um and yeah for that one uh i'm just gonna start with uh the aspect ratio again um and i tend to uh, have the image in the center, like the, the, the main object in the center of the image. And I think I'm just, uh, just always drawn to symmetry, um, and more of, of a central perspective and, you know, like watching the Wes Anderson movies, for example, and having the, the symmetry and like the, just the balance in each of his shots. Uh, has been just a huge influence and inspiration Definitely. for me. 
and even the the warmer color palette that's a very Wes Ad- uh, Anderson aspect mm-hmm. um, with the sort of softer detail on the uh, lower contrast and things um, yeah it's definitely an inspirational view of things I love mm-hmm. Wes's films yeah yeah totally um, so with that one uh, I'm just going to do the same here uh, go in order and with the temperature I'm gonna uh, go a little bit more to the colder side here and uh, just to uh, make the image even a little bit colder but then later I'm gonna uh, yeah manipulate the blues uh, as you can see in just a second um, then here with the exposure um, I'm going to rise the exposure just a little bit to make the image pop a little bit more. Um, but then with the highlights, I'm going to lower these again a little bit. I just love having, you know, especially with an image like that where you have a lot of sky, um, which is more of the brighter part of the image. Um, reducing those, I feel like makes just the image a little bit more harmonious. Um, and then here with the shadows, I'm going to rise the shadows here because I do like all the information, like you said before, having all this information in the image itself. And then with the whites and blacks, I'm not going to touch these here. Um, and then I think I'm just going to leave it here with texture and clarity. I'm not going to touch this one here. Uh, because I already feel like having the very open aperture uh, already gives a, a nice and soft look to the image. Mm-hmm. Um, and then here, uh, what I do again to kind of just add my personal touch to it is go a little bit more to cyan. Uh, as you can see here, if you go too crazy, you're going to change the image mm-hmm. totally. Uh, so here, uh, I think I'm going to go with this here. And also sometimes what I like to do is use the, the like the switch here uh, and just see how I've been changing the image uh, with this part. And uh, I'm going to check for a luminance here. Uh, and sometimes I do know uh, already how that's going to affect the image. And sometimes it's just uh, playing around and seeing if I want to like change something here or not. So uh, you don't, I, I don't think you always have to have a vision of where you want to go to uh, with your edit. Yes. It's just nice totally... to play and experiment and see what plans out. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. So I'm going to brighten the blue parts a little bit. Um, I like how that turns out. Um, And sometimes what I do here, uh, I'm just going to check how that's going to affect the image. Um, I'm going to focus on the shadows and make those even more blue. And to do so, I'm going to use this part here. And as you can see, depending on the color you choose, you're going to change the image heavily. And also with how uh, saturated it is, you're going to change that as well. Um, I think I would do it like that. I'm just going to check how much that's done. And mainly you can see the effect here in the darker parts of the image image in the shadows um and yeah i just like how that mm. affects the image and i Overall, guess it just really accentuates that blue hour it's just yeah telling exactly. that narrative of the time of the day just immediately mm-hmm. yeah um and here uh i don't think i'm going to use the the profile correction because I like the kind of vignette that you get here. Uh, I'm just going to check how that would look like with the before and after. 
Yeah, and actually I do like how this image looks without having the profile corrections. So yeah, it's definitely and, adding a lot of drama and yeah, yeah, really does add to it, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I think so too. So yeah, there's there's like there's no need to use the profile corrections all the time. Um, and yeah, I just like how how that turned out. Um, there's some mentions in the chat about the detail in this image. I think everyone's just a bit blown away of how much detail there is. Yeah, <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, happy to hear. Um, it's yeah, I think I just uh, like having images where you know the longer you look at them, the the more uh, you can find, um, mm -hmm. and just having an image where you can rest and and just wander around with your eyes and um, and yeah. So here uh, you can see the before and after again, um, nice. and it's. Yeah, it's again, it's it's not a heavy edit. It's just, uh, you know, making sure I'm uh, sticking with my look and with how I like to uh, have the colors and, um, you know, manipulating the blues here um, does most of the job already because uh, that's, that's mainly what we got here uh, because of the blue hour. Mm. Is this... Um... Is this type of image that you only got a couple of or did you spend a lot of time capturing different scenes around here were you on the move um here your process so i think i was shooting like five to ten images of this location so i'm really more of a person that's like on the move um sometimes i go crazy with a location when i'm like totally blown away but blown away by the scenery and I just want to capture it and make sure I uh, I didn't screw it up mm -hmm. um, but yeah for this one um, I wish I had the the external drive with the files with me it's it's uh, m maybe if we have some time at the end I can show you the uh, lightroom catalog with the images from this uh, location and then, then just show you uh, the different images that I took of the location. Um, but yeah, what I sometimes it's you know the the first image that I take at a location that's the best. And sometimes um, I I need a moment and and take a few images and then uh, have the best image at the end. So there's no like correct way of of photographing the location. It's just uh, yeah for yeah. me it's what's important is to like to be flexible to move around to play with the angle um and also with the kind of lens because uh here for example you could also just focus totally on the dimension and just photograph the mountain itself with like a telephoto um so yeah there's always multiple ways of just capturing one place I can imagine um, if, actually, what's the resolution of this? Because I can imagine you could crop in and you could almost create a still a very printable image um, with more detail zoomed in if you if you were. Uh, yeah, I guess. So, I mean, yeah, the resolution is absolutely high enough to have a cropped version as well. Um, mm. Of course. There. Just so much detail. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Um, should we hop up, uh, like, to the hop to the next image? Yeah. Um, so um, here we have one um, that I took in Iceland, um, and I think usually what I do is I uh, I like to focus on one aspect of a place um, that catches my attention. And in this, uh, and in this example, uh, it's it's been uh, just the the coastline and the you know having the ocean uh, meeting the like the black sand beach, and there there are also a lot of other images that I took of this place uh, having like the whole scenery in the image, but at the end I was just totally drawn to uh, to having this like very minimalistic approach of 
capturing the place and just having uh, the ocean and the beach and, and the beautiful like highlights here of, of the waves uh, meeting the beach. Is this taken with the, I can see it's a, a cannon image, but is that from a helicopter? Uh, no, it's it's not. It's um, it's uh, from from like a cliff. Oh, um, wow. okay. So you can hike up a, a little bit, and you can see. Uh, yeah, you can have that view uh, to to this. I don't actually know the name of the beach, um, but yeah, I think the um, just the like you said, the the angle is. Is very interesting and that's definitely very dramatic cool. yeah. <laughs> yeah honestly it, at first i thought it was a drone image but then i saw it was a dot cr2 mm -hmm. thought, oh maybe you maybe you had a helicopter ride which would have been spectacular around that. oh yeah yeah i would love that I, I haven't done a helicopter ride yet so that's, oh, that's so much fun so, yeah i can imagine yeah. it's it's definitely on my list so definitely. one day um i'd love that um yeah so for that one um, I, I've been going a little bit crazy with the edit here. Um, I can show you the after, um, just to show you how I've been adding this image in a way. Um, and I think what, uh, what I felt, what the camera wasn't really able to capture is like that the ocean actually was blue. So here it almost looks like a monochrome uh, mm -hmm. image, like a black and white one. Um, but what I want to do with the edit is make sure I'm getting the blues back of the water. Um, and yeah, and just having, I don't know, I'm sorry. I don't know if you can hear my cat screaming in the background. <laughs> no, I can't hear that at all. Okay, <laughs> good. Um, so um, what I'm going to do first again is have the image crops a little bit and then i think i want to uh have the upper part here because i like how like because of the perspectives the waves are getting like smaller and smaller um also i think it's it looks quite dramatic because i shot it with the telephoto um and just yeah um which kind of changes how uh like I feel like shooting with the telephoto plays with the dimensions of a place. Mm. Um, and yeah, I, I would say probably 50 to 60% of the images that I shoot uh, in landscape photography are shot with a telephoto. Yeah. It's a, there's a lot of purists out there who would disagree with that, but I'm totally on your side. I love shooting <laughs> with a telly. Um, awesome. Even with um, uh, shooting in wider apertures for landscape, sometimes just the, the nature of the scene, the amount of light available just dictates the fact that you need to use a wider aperture. And yeah. um, if you were to, you know, decide not to take an image because you couldn't reach your certain minimum aperture requirements, then you've missed that image. Mm -hmm. um, so oh, yeah, yeah, sometimes, you you know, the, the scene just dictates it. But yeah, shooting with a telly, I'm a big fan of that, definitely. <laughs> Nice. Yeah. Um, so for that one, uh, I'm going to start, like I said, I want to get the, the blues back, but also having this one, um, just like the one before, a little bit more colder. Um, well, it's funny because we were talking about how I like having warmer tones in my images, but I'm <laughs> showing you examples of colder ones. But yeah. Um, so I think what I'm going to do first here uh, is use the gradient filter. Um, and what I want to do here is focus on, on the water side and then focus on the beach side here. Um, so for the gradient filter, what I will do here is uh, I will use it. And then I'm going to check how, you know, what part of the image is affected by the gradient filter. Um, and then I'm going to reduce the temperature of this part um, and what it all automatically did because I think it was saved somewhere is it uh, it's been playing with the uh, exposure mm -hmm. but yeah I'm gonna 
just leave it like that. Make this part a little bit brighter. And um, when we come to this part here, I can affect the color of the ocean again. And just like with the other images, um, I'm gonna have this a little bit more cyan here. Um, and you can just add multiple gradient filters to the image itself. And I think what I'm gonna do here as well is have another one um, that's gonna affect the beach. And for that one, I'm gonna reduce the exposure a little bit. Um, you could, and that would probably be the same, use the shadows and just reduce the shadows and the blacks because that's, you know, that part is mainly dark. Um, and just making sure I'm just affecting that part and not the waves itself. Um, and yeah, I think I'm just gonna, you know, I wanna add a little bit more drama to the already dramatic uh, scenery here. Um, and I'm quite happy with how that turned out here. Um, and then what I like in this image is the, the waves. And instead of lowering the highlights here, uh, I'm gonna brighten them a little bit, but, which also already adds a little bit more contrast to the scenery. Mm. It makes it a bit crisper, doesn't it? It just mm -hmm. kind of pops it a bit more. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, you could also use the, like the dehaze here, um, but then you also get a lot more structure in the water. Um, mm. And I don't want to have that change here. So I'm just going to uh, have the highlights here, and then I'm going to check for if I want to make the shadows even darker. Uh, Maybe just a little bit, because I don't want to look at, have it, I mean, I, I still want to have like a natural look to the image. Um, so, you know, uh, checking the before and after in between uh, or during during the editing process. Um, yeah, like I said before, it's just really important. Um, and I'm just going to check if I'm happy with how the blue is like, and actually, yeah, I'm just pretty happy with how that turned out. I'm gonna check what the luminance does here. Um, and as you can see, that's gonna affect the image quite heavily. Mm. And I'm gonna bring up the luminance of the blue parts a little bit, just to make the image pop a little bit more. Um, and then I think for what I can see now, I'm pretty happy with how the edit turns out. Um, and I think that itself is, is a good example of how like within Lightroom, you can just edit your images also like with just partial editing and I'm just, yeah. I have to say, I almost never hop to Photoshop anymore because I can do like almost anything uh, in Lightroom and just having that kind of option to focus on a certain part of the image is just awesome. I actually find that I've, I edit so many more images since using Lightroom. I, mean, I, have, mm -hmm. I haven't used Photoshop for editing photos in maybe six, seven years now or so. Um, and having that sort of catalog into editing process, it allows me to edit my alternate images. And I think mm -hmm. like, oh, let's see how this looks with, you know, a slightly different composition. It just gives you a bit more choice. Oh, at yeah. the same time, too much choice leaves you thinking, well, I can't decide between the two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's correct. Yeah. And also, I mean, one thing that I absolutely love is um, like how you can just create your own presets and just be a lot quicker with the edit uh, when you're, uh, when you have a, um, a set of images that you want to edit. Um, and I think usually what I do is like, whenever I come back from a trip, um, I, I create a new catalog for that trip. Um, and then 
either I have a preset that I created in the past that's going to work well with the location, or I'm just going to create a new one and then add the uh, the preset to to the images of the set itself. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I can this actually is a very Wes Anderson looking scene. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, and for that one, for example, I can uh, show you a preset that I remember that I created uh, for this scenery. Um, and I think that's the one that I use mostly for like images around that kind of light um, and, and just scenery. Um, How long and... did you wait for someone to walk through? It doesn't look like there's much foot traffic through there. Uh, it's actually, it's my girlfriend. So we were oh. uh, traveling together and uh, I didn't tell her to walk there. Uh, she was just, she was walking there. Um, and here you can still, you can still see a car that's parked. So here there's a little like parking lot. And I uh, think okay. she was just, you know, walking towards her, checking out uh, the, like the look, the overview that you have when standing here, because from here you can look down to the valley. So it's actually, uh, yeah, it's a nice viewpoint here. And I was just uh, checking out a glacier that's behind me. Um, and then I was turning around, seeing her walking past the, the hotel. And uh, yeah, Good like timing. I said before, I just uh, love capturing something where you can, you know, see the scale uh, of a place. And then at the same time, I feel like uh, people are drawn to images where there's some kind of human element to it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and just feeling like, oh yeah, I would just love to walk there myself and uh, and just be there. Um, and yeah, uh, so, I mean, I can, I see we only have a few minutes left here. Um, if you want to, I could also just uh, quickly go through each step that I did here for the edit. Um, and so we have the, the cropping uh, at the beginning again, making sure that I have the right angle, especially when I'm shooting buildings. I want to make mm. sure uh, that the lines are correct. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and then here I'm going for warmer tones for sure. And then with the tint uh, going a little bit uh, towards the green to, uh, to underline the green uh, window things thingies i don't know what these are called actually <laughs> shutters i guess is the yeah oh uh, yeah yeah that makes sense um those ones then, look like they actually do work as well sometimes they're they're just there for decoration yeah yeah i think like an actual traditional one mm -hmm. i think these work actually you're right um and then yeah like you could see i was you know reducing the highlights making sure i just underline the blue of the sky um, bringing up the shadows to get enough uh, information of the mountains here. Um, and then here, let's see what these did. did. So um, what I was doing here is uh, playing with this part again of the image. Um, so I was adding more warmth to the highlights just to underline the already warm uh, light we have here um, and then with the shadows I was going a little bit more to towards colder tones uh, and and that kind of split toning just uh, you know having like a colder part for the shadows and maybe a warmer part for the highlights uh, just makes like gives a nice balance to the colors within an image um, and yeah, that's that's what I did here. So here we actually have a quite complex image uh, with like a lot of different parts, which are like in the shadows and then highlights and a lot of midtones and mm. still the blue of the sky, uh, and just getting a more even look. It's almost like a, a cross processing, um, like processing for slides, but with analog film, it's, it's sort yeah. of bringing that, especially with that sort of blue cyan sort of hint to it. Mm hmm yeah. Um, and then here, what I was doing here. 
So making sure that I uh, remove the chromatic aberration, um, checking what the lens correction does here. Um, so you can see the big difference in the lower part of the image here. Um, and yeah, I was just choosing for having the lens correction here. Um, and then sometimes uh, I just revisit the, the, like the first parts of the edit, like the exposure, etc., and make sure that at the end I get to the, yeah, maybe like uh, make the, the edit a bit more stronger um, and add more contrast or stuff like that to the image itself. Um, and yeah, so here you, wow. you see the before and after. Um, and, and you know, the, the, the way I remember the scenery was a lot more like this, um, you know, the, because it was almost, uh, yeah, it was going towards sunset and having mm -hmm. the, the harsh shadows here. Um, but then the warm light, um, I was just, yeah, trying to, uh, to go towards that kind of edit, uh, and, and the way I remember the scenery. Yeah. Lovely. Um, we are just about at time on everything, but these have been fantastic images uh, to look at. And uh, it's it's been great to see your process both on the, the cooler toned of things and also the, the warmer toned. Um, I mean, this image in particular, it's as you're going through it, it feels subtle, but then you look at it after you're like, oh no, this actually does have quite a difference in in the outcome. Um, mm -hmm. But it, it feels so warm. It's, it's the type of scene that you could look at. And you could just imagine the sun on your back just kind of uh yeah just keeping the warmth and making it all nice and fuzzy inside I like it. <laughs> yeah um thank you thank you so much for sharing uh your images and your editing process um we've got a few sessions coming up for the rest of the week uh, so i believe on wednesday it will be uh tim and robert uh going through some after effects and uh some special effects things which uh should be quite a fun session and towards the end of the week on friday i believe uh we've got i believe it was a representative from off um going through designer to own studio so that is a uh, quite a cool session and once again those will be at 12 o'clock um on uh, v hunt and of course there is the discord channel if you want to go and join discord and uh, join in with the community in the chat uh, that is active throughout the week so thank you julia for sharing your images um My make pleasure. sure you go and follow her on socials and uh yeah it's uh, beautiful images and i look forward to seeing all of you lovely people in another <laughs> stream real soon thank you so much thank you